Dr. Patrick Billy Hall. Born on August 4, 1940, Dr. Cole, who hails from Abonema in Kalabari Kingdom of River State, Nigeria, Patrick Dele Cole turned 81 on August 4, 2021. He is well known for his exploits in the academia, public service, politics, diplomacy, and business. The significant role he played in consolidating the concept of academics in journalism in our nation cannot be overemphasized. He is, as David Cord Murray would have described him, a man from whom you could borrow brilliance. His vision was to essentially ensure the intersection of academia and the newsroom. And by that singular action, he changed the face of journalism in Nigeria forever and acquired an iconic image with his intellect, poise, and personal style. My first schooling was at the Princess School here in Lagos, and then Zambat School in Enugu, and continued that schooling until uh, I went to secondary school, which was in Baptist High School, Port Harcourt, uh, where I stayed till 1958. And 59 and 60, I went to the Badon Grammar School. And Badon Grammar School, we did the HSC. And from there, uh, it was time to go to university. But funds were a little difficult. So my parents were not able to pay um, for me to go to University of Ibadan. And um, did the scholarship interview, federal government scholarship interview wasn't successful. And um, I couldn't understand why. Because um, nearly all my classmates got scholarships, federal government scholarships, so the then Afro-American uh, scholarship to... So, in my anger, I barged in into um, a guy in the scholarship office, one Mr. Okoye, and I said, oh, what's going on? Why? And he said, I should get out of his office. I'm not going. Why? Why? You know, look, look at the list. All the, all these guys who are classmates of mine all have scholarships. What exactly have I done that I wasn't able to get the scholarship? And then, uh, you know, there was this moment. Well, should I look at his list or should I not look at his list? So he said, let me see that list. So I gave it to him and he looked at it. This was at the old federal government, government secretariat, in the old secretariat building in the marina. So I gave it the list and he checked and it was true. And then he said, um, okay, sit down. Right, um, application for foreign scholarship. It took us about three days in those days. Um, I think we over, uh, slept overnight in uh, Cairo, and then overnight in Bangkok, then overnight in Sydney, and then on the fourth day we arrived in. Uh, New Zealand. And it was uh, that's the beginning of the story, and so I did the first degree there three years thereafter. Um, 
So I did, I think in, in the language of Oxford or Cambridge, you would have called it the double tripods because I, I read um, to the third year um, international relations and history and political science. Um, then the terms of the scholarship was after three years you, you had to go home if you wanted to continue. So I continued while given another scholarship to do the master's uh, same university. So I came home I saw my parents and went back to the university and um, in 65 finished the masters and um, while doing the masters I applied for a UNESCO fellowship which I which I got to go and study at the University of um, in Amsterdam at the Free University it was called Free University um, I went to Amsterdam, but when I started interviewing various people who were on the same scholarship program, it sounded that it was going to take me some time. Uh, you know, and the point about education at that level, at that time, was that you wanted to finish as soon as you possibly can and get back to work. So I... Um, Unfortunately, my father died. It has been written that Dr. Cole, in his simplicity and humility, regarded the experience at the Daily Times Nigeria as a learning process, and he learned fast, to the extent that all associates in the stable loved him. In his pronouncements and carriage, there was always sincerity in all his purpose, which resonated well at all levels in the company. In those days, the Federal Public Service Commission and the Family Minister went around scouting for people. And so he called me while I was in Cambridge, so I saw him. And uh, he said, look, <clears throat> we've had these uh, soldiers in office since 66. Uh, they want to go and we really don't have any clue as to how to disengage them. Um, do you have any ideas? I said, no, but um, it's been done before. And I uh, said, well, what do you want? I said, well, I, you know, I already have two jobs. He said, well, it seems as if you have to add the third one. So get a leave of absence from those two. Come to the Nigeria Civil Service Cabinet Office and um, give us some ideas of how to disengage from the military. How, can, how, how they can disengage and go back to the barracks and the political process, um, which I then did, I came back in 73, so I was working in the political division in the cabinet office uh, where we were working out um, a program of disengagement. Till date, Dr. Cole remains significant in the eyes of those who would like to remember Nigeria as the black man's pride. So we continue to borrow from the brilliance of a man who practically demonstrated that journalism is truly a multidisciplinary profession. During his memorable days at Daily Times, he established the premier editorial board in Nigeria. Later at The Guardian, through his influence, the editorial board membership became classy and influential. 
Dr. Cole is not only a visionary, but a good judge of men. He prevailed on Dr. Stanley Masebo, this newspaper's first managing director and executive editor, to leave his teaching job in a New York university and return to Nigeria, just as he did with Dele Giwa. He convinced both men to work for the Daily Times, arguably beginning the era of superstar journalists. Although he has straddled multiple spheres of human endeavor, from being a university lecturer to being a politician, businessman, and diplomat, there is no service that has afforded him the opportunity to be in his best elements than journalism. Dr. Cole will forever remain a landmark in the newspaper industry and indeed the Nigerian society. What does professionalism mean? Now, if you are a doctor, you practice that profession. Nothing says that a doctor cannot be, let's say, the head of a hospital or vice chancellor. But what he takes to any other job which he has is that idea that this is a professional job. No, that this is so. so you, you would expect that a, a, a doctor would look at whatever problem he, he faces within the medical field or in any other field with exactly the same perspicacity, the sharpness, the skill which he uses to dissect and decide how things got to where they got to and the things which he can do to improve them. The second thing which a professional uh, civil service is going to should do is to hold the man to the promises which he made. You said you will do one, two, three. Oh, no, 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 well, well you know, this, uh, that's what you said. And if you want to do one, two, three, these are the things which you have to put in place. So, um, I'm sure people have forgotten. Nigeria used to have uh, development plans. Uh, Three-year development plan, five-year development plan, whatever. And uh, these, was, uh, these were plans which were put together depending on what the political atmosphere was for you to be able to achieve the things which uh, we developed my meant. If you know anything about Nigeria, just think of the planning and all the, the information you have to gather so as to be able to make sure that all children between the ages of five and at that time, 14 were in school. So how many schools do you have to build? How many teachers do you have to have? Where are you going to place the schools? There are all kinds of... Uh, but uh, these things fly out and you just hear some corner announcing. And, um, but having announced it, you now have to implement it and it is in the implementation that your professionalism shows.